This is a bird feeder I designed using 4 inch square steel tube. Let me show you how it's made. Here are some of the items you'll need to build the bird feeder. Be sure to read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. Wear appropriate safety equipment when necessary. First, we'll need to cut a couple pieces of tube that we'll use for this project. This is four inch by four inch square tube with a 3 16 inch wall. A 12 inch and a six inch tube are used for the body of the bird feeder. These are the paper patterns I developed for the bird feeder. As I have done in other projects like the rocket stove, I'll apply the patterns directly to the steel. I am using 3M Super 77. Using a bandsaw or a cutoff wheel, I'll simply cut on the lines. The advantage of using a bandsaw is that if I only cut from one side, my pieces should be symmetrical. The design of the bird feeder was meant to maximize the use of the tube. The accuracy of the saw cuts were not critical, as I can just clean them up on the belt sander. I will also round the corners. Here are all the pieces fitted and mocked up. Now I can remove the patterns with a bit of WD-40 and my favorite bottle opener. Bonus points if you are able to capture a mill stamp. If you are offended by woodworking, you may want to skip the next minute or so. I have provided an indicator at the bottom. I will make a replaceable wooden floor for the bird feeder, using some of the cedar left over from my deck chair. The cedar adds a nice warm contrast to the rest of the steel. The floor can be as simple or complex as you want. You could even weld in a simple strip of steel if you're allergic to wood. This will all get glued together with Tight Bond 3. After the edges were sanded flush, I coated the wood with penetrating epoxy and spar varnish to help it weather the elements. Back in the metal shop, I'll mark where I want to prep for the welds. The roof pieces will get beveled and welded on both sides. I will use a piece of copper to back my initial tacks. This keeps me from welding to the tabletop.
Then I'll finish the roof by welding on both sides. The sides will require a bit more attention, as we'll only bevel in the places we marked earlier. Since the bird feeder will be post mounted, I'm going to drill holes to mount the bird feeder to the post as well as to attach the floor. I am also going to include some large drain holes in the bottom. These holes will be countersunk for brass screws. Now it is time to weld these pieces together to form the body. For this, I'll be using a Multimatic 220 from Miller. This would be an excellent project for practicing MIG, TIG, or stick. The 220 can do all of these, but I am using MIG since that is the process that most people are familiar with. I'll tack on both sides to keep everything together. Incidentally, all of the welding and grinding you see is filmed through a Miller Clearlight 2.0 helmet. It is amazing the clarity that they have been able to achieve with a new lens. I'll knock down all the welds with a flap wheel. After mocking everything up, I decided to cut another piece to act as a skirt around the top of the post. This piece is about two and a half inches long. I suppose you could make it longer if you really hate squirrels. But then again, this bird feeder is pretty much bulletproof. I added a couple tabs to the roof to keep it in the correct position. After a quick palm sanding, I decided to clear coat the steel with KBS Diamond Clear. I could have chosen a color, but I decided to preserve the worn denim look instead. 
I painted the internal areas that would see the most moisture with industrial enamel. Now to prep a simple post. This is pressure treated wood that I am aging with some stain. Four inch steel tube fits perfectly over four inch lumber. All that's left is to screw it to the post, install the floor, and fill it with some birdseed. This feeder will hold a little over a quart of birdseed. I hope you enjoyed this project. It is just in time for spring. Thanks for watching.